Hello, it's The Grape Explorer. Today I'm going to do a wine tasting. Now, I have to say that there are some wines I think we can all agree are desirable. There are some wines that are highly sought after. There are definitely some that are unobtainable, thanks to the price of them. And then in the case of Buckfast Tonic Wine, there are just some wines that are notorious and not always for the right reasons. Buckfast tonic wine is something, one, I've never had, and two, I was asked to do a video on so that they could get my reaction. <laughs> so I've really got no idea what to expect here. But this is a caffeinated wine, uh, which was originally made by Benedictine monks in the southwest of England um, at Buckfast Abbey, which is in uh, the county of Devon. It's based on a French recipe and it was classed as a tonic wine because when it was first released it was advertised that in small quantities three glasses a day would be good for your health and for lively blood. Now interestingly what the bottle actually says on the front now is the name tonic wine does not imply health giving or medicinal properties. I absolutely love that <laughs> because it just is well, we created it to be one thing. It was a good selling slogan back in the day, um, but these days with health and safety regulations in place, we can't possibly say it's good for you. So it has no health giving or medicinal properties despite still being called tonic wine. Like I say, this is a caffeinated wine, and in this 750 milliliter bottle, there's about the equivalent of six cups of coffee. So it's pretty strong as well. And for that reason, I'm filming at 9 a.m. today and I have forgone my morning coffee because I thought I'd have this instead. There are actually two varieties of the bottle. Uh, this is the green bottle, which is sold in the United Kingdom. There's also a brown bottle sold in the Republic of Ireland. The brown bottle, believe it or not, actually has an even higher caffeine content, higher than even a can of Red Bull. This comes in just slightly under a Red Bull, um, but the alcohol volume on this one is 15%. So taking all of that caffeine and all of that alcohol into account, you can see why this one is notorious. Think of something that stimulates you whilst removing all your inhibitions all at once, and you're probably on the right line with this Buckfast tonic wine. Now, I wasn't able to get this in any local supermarkets, but I did see it in a lot of local convenience stores dotted around the town where I live, uh, and it cost me eight pounds to buy. It's been bottled by a company called J Chandler & Co. Now they're not based in Devon, which is where this original recipe came from. And that is because in 1927, the Abbey actually lost the license to sell the wine. And as a result, they actually allowed other wine merchants to distribute the wine on their behalf. So like I say, this has come from somewhere actually not too far from where I am. So it says it's a red wine based aperitif, 99.28% wine, high caffeine content, it's 30 milligrams per 100 milliliters. Uh, it's not recommended for children, clearly. Let's get the crack open on this one. Uh, like I say, I've never had this before. I've got no idea what to expect, uh, but very curious to give it a try. So, oh, it's brown. Um, okay, it's brown. Uh, looks like cold coffee. So, out of the glass, it's uh, brown in colour. Now, 99.28% red wine, I was expecting something red to come out, but it is genuinely brown in colour. So it looks a little bit like tar, uh, sort of liquefied tar. Um, aroma intensity, really, oh my good, that's pronounced. I don't know why I dipped in. That is really pronounced. Okay, what kind of characteristics are we getting from the aromas? It's got a kind of black cherry, black plum intensity about it, but there's something to me that's quite um, medicinal on the nose as well. It's almost like a sort of iodine-y type smell. Uh, it actually looks like iodine. Now I've just said that, this is exactly what it looks like. It looks like iodine in the glass. And it's got a bit of spice to it as well. It's got a real cinnamony, nutmeggy sort of aroma about it as well. And then there's something else I can't, can't quite put my finger on at the moment, but it's, it's quite aerating. You know, like um, some sort of cough syrups can be quite menthol-y in characteristics. This is what this, this has a, a feel for, kind of a mentholated cherry and plum with that iodine, beautiful. Okay, taste. Mm. Mm. It's not awful. <coughs> it tastes like blackcurrant and cough syrup. It tastes like a really 
plummy fruit cake. Um, it's sweet. It's sweet on the palate. So let's go through some of those taste characteristics. It's medium sweet. It's got medium acidity. It's it tastes like uh, cough syrup mixed with black currant uh, on, on the taste perspective. It's got a reasonable length, I'd say sort of medium. Um, it's medium bodied. It's brown. It's, I can understand people might drink this at Christmas. It's got a bit of a festive feel about it. I actually think people just drink this on street corners, um, but it's got a bit of a Christmas feel about it. The colour's really putting me off. It's it's like flat Coca-Cola in the glass. It's definitely got that alcohol burn about it. The alcohol taste is actually, I know I said it was 15%, but the alcohol taste is quite intensive. Um, on the palate, it's really hitting me at the back of the throat. I'm, I, it's not something I would serve to, to anybody. Um, I'm worried that you know I'm going to be stimulated and my inhibitions are going to be lowered. Um, I'm also worried it's 9 a.m. But it's very unusual. It's kind of caramelly as well on, on, on the taste. So we've now got cough mixture, blackcurrant, and caramel. If those things work for you as a combination, then this is absolutely the right drink for you. Um, so in conclusion, you know, aroma intensity and um, taste intensity, quite similar. You know, it was really pronounced on the nose and I'm actually getting lots of things on the palate as well. So balanced, it is balanced. It doesn't really have length. It's got acidity, but it hasn't got length. The flavor isn't actually, um, it isn't actually staying around. Uh, from an intensity perspective, it was more intense on the nose than on the palate, and like I say, it doesn't hang around. It's not complex at all, it's, it's caffeine and wine mixed together. Um, but it's eight pounds, you know, and if you're looking for a night out, and you're trying to last the whole night out, this might be the drink, this might be the drink for you, I don't know. I just think, you know, that, that's brown. I don't know if anybody wants to have that really. Um, and it is a real brown as well, it's got a kind of yellowing on the rim. It's a really unusual drink. It's, it's like nothing I've ever really tasted before. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but that's Buckfast tonic wine made by the Benedictine monks of the Buckfast Abbey in England. But now it's over to you. Is this something you can get in your country? I mean, like I say, I found it in a few shops here in the UK. It's very popular in the UK in certain uh, circles of people. Um, but is it something that you can get where you are? And if so, have you ever tried it? Or do you have something that's a similar equivalent in the country where you are? Something that's wine and caffeine all mixed together. Let me know in the comments section below. I'm the Grape Explorer and I will see you soon. Cheers.